Welcome to the fifth lesson in Web Automation with LeapWork. In the previous lesson, we looked at different ways of filling data into a web form, both hard-coded data and also by reading the data from a database. In this lesson, we will do almost the opposite and focus on reading values from a web page. We will look at the most common controls on a web form and also look at how we can simply read static text from a web page. I have a simple flow with a start web browser block with a URL set to facebook.com and an open browser for the design of the flow. I have added a few values to the registration form in advance. We will start simple and read the value in the first name field using a get web text building block. This block will return the textual part of the captured element, so we start by capturing the first name field. To check the result of the read operation, I'll add a log message after the get web text block. And input the text found to the log message block. When we run the flow from the get web text block, we see that the text found matches the value in the first name field. Another way of using the get web text block is to read static text on a web page. For instance, reading some of the marketing text on the registration form. We change the captured element to the see photos and updates and select an element that includes both the bold and the normal text. Running this block would simply return the text as we saw with the first name field. So let's try to use another feature on the get web text block, the format. This feature allows us to specify exactly which part of a larger text we want returned by specifying a pattern or a format that the returned text should match. In this example, we could specify that the text we want, shown as the text token, is the text following the word updates. Let's run the block. It returned from friends in newsfeed which is exactly the text we wanted, namely the text following the word updates. Another similar feature is the filter that can be used to check if a text contains, starts with or ends with a specific word or phrase. To exemplify this, I select the contains option and insert photos as the word to look for. If this word is not found, the building block will fail and trigger the not found connector. If the word photos is found, everything is good and the top connector will trigger. If we run the block, we see that the text was not found within the timeout specified. Because of the format clause specified, the text didn't contain photos. Let's try to run it without the format. Success. Now the text contains the word photos. The next control to look at is the birthday field. Three drop downs for the month, day and year. To read the values from the dropdowns, we use a get web dropdown building block and capture the dropdown to get the selected value from. When we expand the get web dropdown block, we have several options. We can select to get the index of the selected element in the dropdown. This is simply the number in the list. 
So if the user selected element number 4, this would return 4. The selected text returns the text that is visible in the list. In this case, may. The last option is to get the value behind the selected element. Remember the way a dropdown is defined. Every entry has a visible text, which is the selected text option, and a value, which is the selected value. Let's try to output all of them into one log message. When we pull the selected index onto the log message block, it expands and allow us to add the value to a field. Fields are like tokens that can be used in composing a message in the message field. We add the other properties to fields as well and create the message. We can add a field by right-clicking in the message and select the field we want inserted. Let's run the block. Index 5, text may and value 5. Let's try to change the month and run the block again. Index 8 text August value 8. So this is how we read data from a drop-down field in a web form. Radio buttons are a bit more complicated than other control types. They look simple, but it is actually a number of controls which have an ID in common that prevents more than one of them to be selected at the same time. Unfortunately, the best and in most cases only way to read the value is to use JavaScript. I have an example here using JavaScript where the complicated bit is encapsulated into a subflow. I have organized my subflows into a folder structure and the get radio button value subflow is easy to add to the flow. Just like this. The first thing to do is to capture one of the elements in the radio button. I use a find web element and capture one of the radio buttons. It doesn't matter which one we select. It's basically just the name that ties the individual options together that is interesting. We capture the female radio button and connect the found element, which is the radio button, to the radio button element on the subflow. Then we connect the output value to a log message. to be able to see the changes in the selection in a simple way. If we just run the flow from when we capture the radio button, we can see that the returned value is empty. This is because no selection has been made. If I manually go back and select mail and then rerun the flow, we get the value two back and selecting female returns one here. An example flow including the radio button subflow can be downloaded from this page and imported into your local solution. Enough about radio buttons. What about numbers? Well, it's basically the same as with text, but we would use a get web number instead. This block will extract the number part of the captured element instead of the entire text. Let's try to capture the current year from the Facebook copyright statement at the bottom of the registration form.
We again use a log message to output the number found and run the block. 2018 is the current year. Just as with the get web text, we can specify both formats and filters. Now will filters suited for handling number operations equal, greater than, less than, etc. In this lesson, we looked at various ways to read and retrieve text selection numbers, etc. from a web page. We looked at text fields, drop downs, radio buttons, which is the same as for checkboxes. We looked at static text and finally we looked at how to get numbers from elements on a web page. Thank you.